the joy of accomplishment. Joy is always the accompaniment of a task successfully accomplished. An undertaking completed, or a piece of work done, always brings rest and satisfaction. When a man has done his duty, he is light-hearted and happy, says Emerson, and no matter how insignificant the task may appear, the doing of it faithfully and with whole-souled energy always results in cheerfulness and peace of mind. Of all miserable men, the shirker is the most miserable. Thinking to find ease and happiness in avoiding difficult duties and necessary tasks, which require the expenditure of labor and exertion, his mind is always uneasy and disturbed, he becomes burdened with an inward sense of shame, and forfeits manliness and self-respect. He who will not work according to his faculty, let him perish according to his necessity, says Carlyle. And it is a moral law that the man who avoids duty and does not work to the full extent of his capacity does actually perish, first in his character and last in his body and circumstances. Life and action are synonymous, and immediately when a man tries to escape exertion, either physical or mental, he has commenced to decay. On the other hand, the energetic increase in life by the full exercise of their powers, by overcoming difficulties, and by bringing to completion tasks which coiled for the strenuous use of mind or muscle. How happy is a child when a school lesson, long labored over, is mastered at last. The athlete, who has trained his body through long months or years of discipline and strain, is richly blessed in his increased health and strength and is met with the rejoicings of his friends when he carries home the prize from the field of contest. After many years of ungrudging toil, the heart of the scholar is gladdened with the advantages and powers which learning bestows. The businessman, grappling incessantly with difficulties and drawbacks, is amply repaid in the happy assurance of well-earned success, and the horticulturist, vigorously contending with the stubborn soil, sits down at last to eat of the fruits of his labor. Every successful accomplishment, even in worldly things, is repaid with its own measure of joy, and in spiritual things, the joy which supervenes upon the perfection of purpose is sure, deep, and abiding. Great is the heartfelt joy, albeit ineffable, when, after innumerable and apparently unsuccessful attempts, some ingrained fault of character is at last cast out to trouble its erstwhile victim and the world no more. The striver after virtue, he who is engaged in the holy task of building up a noble character, tastes, at every step of conquest over self, a joy which does not again leave him, but which becomes an integral part of his spiritual nature. All life is a struggle, both without and within, there are conditions against which men must contend. His very existence is a series of efforts and accomplishments, and his right to remain among men as a useful unit of humanity depends upon the measure of his capacity for wrestling successfully with the elements of nature without or with the enemies of virtue and truth within. It is demanded of man that he shall continue to strive after better things, after greater perfection, after higher and still higher achievements, and in accordance with the measure of his obedience to this demand, does the angel of joy wait upon his footsteps and minister unto him. For he who is anxious to learn, eager to know, and who puts forth effort to accomplish, finds the joy which eternally sings at the heart of the universe. First in little things, then in greater, and then in greater still, man must strive, until at last he is prepared to make the supreme effort and strive for the accomplishment of truth, succeeding in which he will realize the eternal joy. The price of life is effort. The acme of effort is accomplishment. The reward of accomplishment is joy. Blessed is the man who strives against his own selfishness. 
he will taste in its fullness the joy of accomplishment.